Today I'm going to be setting up a Git server. I've done this before and uh, I recently switched servers so I needed to set it up again so I figured I'll show you how it, you know, how you do it. Uh, I'll probably have to break this up in two videos because I really want to do two things. One is I want to have a Git server so, you know, although I use GitHub and GitLab, uh, theoretically I have something on my own website where I keep everything and I, I basically push, you know, when I make changes to any repository, I push them to all, all websites. Um, additionally, once I do that, I also want to have a HTML website that looks something like this. So this is Suckless's Git uh, repository, and it has this web front end uh, where you have you see all the repositories. You can click on all of them. You can see individual commits, things they do. Um, you know, I've I've had this before on my website. I actually had a style sheet that I like more than what they have, but in general, it auto generates all the stuff for you. Um, so I'll probably do. I'll probably have to break this up into two videos, but I'll go through it pretty quick. Um, so. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do, or I will say there's one other thing before we start, and that is, um, you know, I, so my website obviously is lukesmith.xyz. I want my Git server to be at git.lukesmith.xyz. That's where it used to be. In fact, you can click on my old uh, Git link and it says, oh, there's nothing there, or at least it's not private. It's trying to redirect to SSL. We'll, we'll take care of all this. Um, but the one thing you need... Uh, if you are doing like I'm doing and you want to put it at git.lukesmith or git.yourname, whatever, um, is you want to make sure on your domain registrar you have a CNAME record that redirects git and if you want www.git to your own website with, of course, a trailing column, uh, column comma. Um, so that that's one thing you need. But once you have something uh, that stuff set up, you basically can start setting up your Git server. So I'm really just going to run through the instructions here on Git's website. Um, so I'm going to SSH into my server. Uh, so here we are. Now, obviously, you need to make sure that you have Git installed. If you don't, uh, I already have Git installed. I needed it for something else. Uh, so let's move my face to somewhere where it's a little better. So the first thing they're going to want you to do is create a Git user. Uh, now this, I suppose, is for Debian or Ubuntu. Um, so it's going to ask for a password. Let's give a password to our Git user. Um, you're not going to be using the password to log in. You're going to be using, you know, your um, SSS, SSH public keys, stuff like that. Full name. Whoever puts stuff in for this garbage is Debian bloat. Um, so now we've added a user and we're going to, uh, I'm going to say su git to become the, the user and we're going to say cd to go to his home directory. Um, now the first thing we want to do is actually, uh, again, we don't want to have to log in using a password that's not really secure when you could use SSH keys. Um, so we are going to create an SSH directory uh, and they, they actually uh, want you to cheer mod everything. So we'll do that just so only us can look at it and create a file called um, SSH authorize authorized keys. If you don't know anything about servers, this is, or SSH, um, this file is where you basically keep the public keys of all the people you want to be, you know, you know, you want to allow to uh, SSH and, you know, go into the server without a password. Okay, basically we want to be able to commit here without a password, so that's what we're doing. So now we've created this file and they say to change its permission, so I'll be a good boy and do that as well, um, just to be nice and safe. Um, so the thing you want to do on your home machine, if you have, you know, an SSH key, um, if you don't have one, you can easily generate them, uh, but you are going to look at the output of SSH and you should have a file called RD, uh, idrsa.pub. So this is your public key, okay? So I'm actually gonna, you know, copy all this. Let's, oops, not that, I don't care about that. Uh, so let's copy the output of uh, this file. Um, and I'll just highlight it, I'll do it the lazy way, even though I literally have bindings for all that stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna open up the authorized key file, blah, 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 and put that in, okay? So that should allow, let's, let's test it out over here. That should allow it, uh, allow us to log in as the Git user with, without a password. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay, so that works. So that, that is all set up. And uh, if, you're, if you're good, if you're using SSH or any of this kind of stuff, you should really also disable logging in via password at all, um, you know, once you've set up this. So that makes your server basically perfectly secure or more or less as secure it can, as it can get. Um, okay, so we've done all this. 
Uh, they give you different ways to do all this stuff. So now what they do is that you want to have a place where you keep all your Git repositories. Now they do it in you know server slash Git. I don't really like that. I like um, really what I like doing is I like having it in var www. Um, where you have websites and stuff. This might be, you might say this is stupid, but I, I don't, I don't know. It's what I've done because I'm, you know, I'm going to make this a clickable website anyway. Uh, so I prefer it, I prefer it to be with my other websites. Basically, that's why. Um, so I'm going to create this directory. Actually, I shouldn't have created this directory. Or, or no, I should create it as, uh, create this directory. But I want to make sure, this is the important thing, that the, the directory is owned by the git user. So we have the git user and the git group, and we're just making sure we're running this as root right now. We have now created this git folder, and it now belongs to the git user. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to become the git user. So now here we are. We are in a, uh, well, we're in this directory, okay? And it should be owned by the git user, okay? So now basically all you have to do, you basically have it set up. Um, it's just you have to make individual places for each of your repositories. Okay, so let's say I want to start with my dot files. So I will make a directory, and again, I'm, I'm running this as the git user. I'll make it called, uh, let's see, they make it project.git. I'll say dot files. Okay, actually, no, let's not say dot files. Let's say dot files.git. Because if, you know, I think it's officially you're supposed to have um, bare repositories with a .git extension. I think that's how you're supposed to do it. That's not what I did last time, but I'll do it this time. I'll be a good boy. Um, so once you are, once you created that directory, go inside of it and just run git init bear. That's all you gotta do. Um, that's all we have to do on the server side at least. Um, so now let's say I'm on my computer here. I'm gonna go to my .files repository and I'm gonna put that repository, I'm gonna basically push the changes to this repository we've created. Okay, so there's a way of adding a remote repository with like git remote add or something like that. I always forget how to do that stuff. I just edit the git config manually. That's probably a terrible habit. But you'll see actually here, if you open up again, this is uh, git slash config. Um, you'll see that you have like, uh, let's say my origin. If you look at this, here's one remote. It's our origin. This is basically GitHub. I have lab, that's GitLab. And uh, this is from my earlier server where I had my home directory. Uh, or not home directory, my home server, my server were basically the thing we're creating now. So you'll see uh, we're logging in as git at git.lukesmith.xyz and the location is var www git slash dot files. Actually now it's got dot files dot git, okay? So now what we should be able to do once that has been added, we should be able to say git push home master. Remember home is the name of this remote and the master is the branch we're pushing. So I'm gonna run that. It's, it's gonna be writing for a little bit. It's gonna be doing some stuff. Actually, my internet is extremely slow, so it might take a little bit of time. Um, but as this loads, basically it's gonna be putting uh, all of our repository in here. Okay, let's see how long this takes. I'm gonna have to cut the video. Oh, looks like it's on. It says 100%, even though it still hasn't gone back to the command line. So once that is done, um, okay, I'm typing, but it's not. Okay, there we go. You should be able to type in git log. See, see how non-responsive this is? And press enter, and you should be able to see your git history. Okay, yeah, see, it's not done. Hurry up. Okay, we're just gonna awkwardly sit here. It's not gonna take more than 10 seconds. Okay, maybe it will, I'm worried. Okay, oh, yeah, there we go, all right. So now we should be able to, yes. So if we run git log, we now see that on our server, we have our git repository. And that's how slow my internet is. I'm sorry about that, folks. That's just how it is out here. Uh, the prices you pay. Um, so anyway, that's it. Basically, we now have a git repository. Um, we can, uh, let's see if they talk about how to clone it. Uh, oops, let me move this thing. Okay, so you can clone your Git repository basically by doing this, git clone, git at your Git server, and then the location. Uh, or if you want, you can make shortcuts in your file structure in case you don't want to like write all of this. Um, but just to you know, go a little further, let's go ahead and add yet another repository. So we have 
my dot files repository. I'm gonna make one for my uh, for larbs as well. So we'll say larbs .git. Actually, we might as well make a bunch of them. You know, let's say my dwm build, my st build. Should be putting git at the end of all of these. Uh, dwm blocks, uh, mutt wizard, all the stuff that you can get from my GitHub or from now this site. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and make these, but we'll just push LARBs already. So again, what you do to create a repository, make sure you're the Git user, that's the important thing. All, all this stuff, all the creating directories should be done as a Git user. If you do it as root, you're gonna have the wrong permissions, you're not gonna be able to write and stuff as the Git user when you log in. But anyway, once you create those directories, just go inside, Git init bare. Um, and then on your local side, let's go to my LARBs repository. Okay, so now we're in, here and again you want to look at your remotes uh, let's see config okay um, and here's what we want to have except for I added the git sequence to the end of that and I'm going to say uh, git push home because we named it home master um, now additionally there is um, you know, one thing is, you know, obviously I, I push to GitHub, I push to GitLab, and I push to my own ho home server. Um, that actually is not too difficult to do. Really what I have is I have an alias. Um, you know, let's say I make some changes or you know, let's say someone has a pull request on GitHub and I merge it. So I'll pull it down to my local repository and then I have an alias GUA, which basically does this. Actually, let's go here. So git remote will show you all your different remote repositories and then I just pipe it into this XR command that pushes everything to it. Actually, maybe I should just have it push the master now that I think about it, because I pretty much, uh, whenever I'm, I, sometimes I'll accidentally push other branches, I don't mean to, because uh, I basically only have master branches, because you know I'm, a, I'm still a Git noob, frankly, even though we're installing our own Git server and stuff like that. Um, all right, so uh, that's about it for this. We're gonna validate that this worked in a second. Uh, it might take a while. Um, but in the next video I do on Git, it's gonna be how to set up stage it so you have a nice uh, interface to actually go in and you know look at your Git commits and stuff like that. Uh, anyway, that's it. Okay, this is gonna take forever. You don't need to see this. It works. Spoilers, that's it. See you, see you guys next time.